Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'd like to bring you uh, a review of some Link & Link uh, microwave motion sensors. Um, so if you haven't before, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video if you find it useful. I'm looking at how this integrates with um, Home Assistant and potentially through to my Loxon home automation system rather than using their own sensors. So let's take a look at um, what these products are and how well they work. Uh, one of the most difficult things with uh, home automation is present sensing, working out when someone's in a room, when they're moving around and how to use that to automate different tasks. So I'm pleased that um, I will review a couple of sensors I've been provided by Link & Link. Um, the eMotion Ultra and the eMotion Pro, these are microwave sensors, so quite a different technology. Um, I've not been sponsored or given any money to do this video, but uh, Link & Link have provided me the products uh, to be able to review them. So up to this point in our build, we've used the Loxon sensors. So those are proprietary sensors from Loxon that can either be wireless or connected over their tree uh, bus system. And they've been pretty successful, actually. They're pretty reliable. So they actually have a combination of a PIR sensor, um, a light sensor, and also a microphone. So uh, the nice thing that these can do is you can use them to um, trigger an action like lighting, or turning on the TV, these sorts of things, when someone comes into a room, they then use the microphone to listen to the activity in the room and will maintain that situation, uh, keeping the lights on, for example, so that um, you know, with just a PIR, that would time out and you end up having to wave your arms about to get the light to come back on again. And that works reasonably well. We're having to tune that a little bit in some of the rooms and you can tune um, the light level that the lights come on, uh, the level of the microphone to keep that um, active, but it's you know, traditional uh, PIR sensor just from uh, Loxon. And I've used Loxon for the core of the installation of the stuff at the house here for lighting, um, control of heating systems, electric towel rails, these sorts of things. And that's all working very, very well. But I've also connected into that um, with. Uh, using Home Assistant and a, a box called One Home, which allows linking between uh, Loxon and the One Home system. So that allows me to use Alexa to control the house. Um, I don't tend to do that. I prefer, you know, I don't want to have to use voice commands if I can avoid it. I'd like to use present sensing and different activities uh, to trigger things around the house. So the difference that, or the challenge that I have in this room in particular, we've got a large open plan living space here with the kitchen, dining space and TV. And we've got different lighting scenes, audio, TV, these sorts of things within the room. And at the moment, all I have is a presence sensor. So if you walk in from the kitchen end of the house, it'll turn the kitchen lighting on. And I don't really have the ability at this moment in automating scenes for different lighting so to step through those lighting scenes at the moment we're touching a light switch on the wall which will step through a series of different scenes um, so these sensors that have been sent from link and link are um, microwave detectors rather than passive infrared so they can see to a much finer granularity where things are in the room um, there's two different versions the pro version that um, sent me can tell the distance away from a sensor so I might well use that in the hallway we've got quite a long hallway and at the moment I'm triggering that either with a PIR sensor that's at one end at the exit of bedrooms of my study so that when we come out the hall lights come on or with a door switch at the other end of the room um, so the, the the pro sensor I'm hoping I can use to actually look at the distance along the hall and trigger different activities based on that the ultra version is a little bit more interesting in that it can actually look at different zones within the room. I think it can detect up to four um, people in different locations within a room, uh, potentially count the number of people in the room, so you can trigger different activities depending on where the people are, how many people there are. And this can integrate in a number of different ways. So it can connect directly to things like Alexa and Google Home. It can use MQTT directly into Home Assistant. Um, and they are looking at how I can get locks on uh, to see those devices and sensors. The support for MQTT and locks on is pretty limited. It, it only can act as a client or a subscriber, and you can only have 16 devices. So I'd have to set up um, potentially automation um, within 
One Home or within Home Assistant or indeed within the Lincoln Link app to then go through and trigger an action within the Loxon system. So the testing I've done so far with this is really just using a Home Assistant, um, Alexa and the Lincoln Link devices and I'm really quite pleased with uh, the sort of um, behavior and activity I've seen with it so far. So functionality wise it's got this micro sensor to look around the room. Uh, the Ultra version is actually a Bluetooth uh, hub as well so it can connect to other local devices like a door or window sensor um, and other devices from Link and Link. I haven't got any of those here but that looks very very simple to set up. It's also an infrared uh, blaster so it can take control of TV, hi-fi, air conditioning, anything else that you've got which has infrared remote control within the room, so that's quite handy as well. Um, and it comes with a cable to do temperature and uh, humidity sensing as well. Um, that, that just fits on the little USB cable. And this comes with a, a sort of flexible mount, I'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but it needs to be looking across the room. So they've, they've defined the heights that you should have it and looking across the room. So for the testing that I've got at the moment, I've just got it connected to a USB battery and I've got it on the end of the worktop in the kitchen here so that it can see um, how I walk around the room and where I am and then trigger different activities based on the location. And I'm doing that at the moment. I've tried it with automations within one home to turn my TV on when I'm in a location. Um, and I've also tried it through MQTT into Home Assistant to control some Zigbee blinds that are actually connected through Somfy to Homer. So a few too many gateways here, but interesting to see how simple it is to connect using MQTT across a variety of different automation platforms. Now, as I said, I would prefer to keep all of that within locks on and keep all of my logic in one location. So I will be doing a follow up video looking at how we connect the MQTT of locks on to look at the um, mosquito server on the uh, home assistant uh, installation that I'm running. Um, so if we just look at how I can move around the room and interact with things here, I've got this set to use the infrared blaster for the TV. So if I go and stand or sit near the TV, TV should come on. I've also got it set so that when I go near the dining room tables that it will automate the blinds. And this is just taking me a few minutes to do that configuration. So I'll just see how that works now as I walk across the room to the TV. Now I've uh, had a look at the interface but I've drawn a virtual box in this location around the seating. The infrared blaster is over there. Uh, that should be turning the TV on. It takes a little moment to detect that. Um, location but yeah, it works pretty well. I've also got that configured so that if the person leaves the location um, then it turns the, the TV off. So that was really simple setup just within the Link and Link application. Um, doesn't need home assistant so I can do that if I've got Alexa. When I configure these things it automatically talks to my Alexa installation and makes them visible to uh, the Alexa application as well. Um, if we take a look at the uh, dining room location, so here this is that slightly more complicated configuration where I'm using MQTT, uh, which is pretty simple to configure on the app, to talk to Home Assistant, which then talks to Sophie to Homer and controls the Zigbee blind. So if I... Um, so we'll just try that with the, the dining room setting now. So I'll move into the zone so it can see me um, near the dining room table. Just takes a moment to detect that you're within that zone, um, but within a few seconds that should automate the uh, blind going through the different gateways to bring the blind down the corner here. So we can see we can automate the blind uh, within that. I can again set that so that when someone leaves the uh, location that the blind will go back up again. So relatively simple to set these up. We'll have a little look at the interface now and see how that works as we walk around the room. So I'm filming this as I um, walk around the room. So you can see the, uh, the, I've got the sensor just temporarily mounted with a battery, as I say, on the worktop here. And you can see that um, I've got a zone there. So I could use that to trigger the, the kitchen lighting, for example. I've got the red box on the right, which is in front of the TV and the blue box on the left, um, which I've just stepped outside of. So you can see that because I'm not there now, the blind is, is going back up on that window. Um, if I move over here, you'll see how quickly this updates. I'll move into the um, red zone, 
which is a TV zone, um, and that should then potentially trigger the TV to uh, power up. It takes a couple of seconds for that to decide that you're definitely in that location, uh, but you can see the TV's appeared there. Um, and if I go back over to um, the dining room, you can see it just takes a, a couple of seconds for it to uh, move over there and, and pick that up. So pretty accurate as to where we are in the room and able to control what's going on. Um, I've got a timeout set on the TV, so it'll take a little while before that gets turned off. Um, so you can see how quickly that sees how I'm walking around the room. Um, I've not got the whole room covered here. Um, but you can simply draw and describe these zones around the room and then set actions to be configured around them. So I think that's gonna be, potentially if I can get that working with all my locks on lighting, um, a great way to be able to um, trigger different scenes. So I've got lighting in this room on either side, we've got TV and audio set up. Uh, so a number of different things and scenes, um, automatic blinds on all the windows, automatic roof lights, um, all sorts of different things that uh, that we potentially want to be able to set scenes up for. So um, if we have a look at what comes in the box, so this is the sensor. Um, it comes on a little magnetic stand, so you know, they give you advice of where to install that. And this is the cable with the temperature humidity sensor. Um, if we look in the app that the sort of information that we've got there, I can look at the sensor itself, and that's where I looked at um, the data and temperature, humidity, brightness level, but as motion detected, and the infrared devices it controls. So in this one here, it's uh, my TV. I can look at the um, brightness, and on the present sensing, I can see that map of um, where things are around the property. So in, in summary, look at these devices, and I'm really, really quite impressed with this. Certainly the accuracy and the ability to look in a large open plan space like we've got here and potentially automate lighting, shading, TV, audio, um, based on your location within the room, how many people there are potentially in the room, the brightness in the room. Um, I think that's fantastic. It integrates really simply into Home Assistant. So if you've got a Home Assistant set up or indeed Google, um, or, or Google Home or Amazon Alexa, that works really well. I think with um, Home Assistant, you get a lot more control to do the levels of automation and linking to different devices. Um, so I just got to do that MQTT work to allow locks on to be triggered by some of these things and potentially automate the lighting and other settings in the room here. Um, the infrared blasting is, is really useful. I haven't got many devices, only the TV and the audio in here, but if you had an air conditioning unit or um, set top boxes and other things, you're able to control those through that blaster. The Bluetooth um, hub as well, being able to connect to local devices is, is really, really useful. Um, I think the only downside I have to it is some of the mounting options and the humidity and temperature sensor being within the cable rather than the device itself. Um, I think what I would do in that case is probably 3D print um, a different mount. Um, this does need to be, I think, mounted on a, a vertical surface rather than in the corner room, so I'd need to look at where that's possible. I could potentially mount it above the patio doors at that end of the room or on the gable wall at this end. So I'm gonna try with different locations to see where we can put those devices. But um, I think they're about 50 pounds or so, so pretty good value for all of the different functionality that you get from the device. Uh, I'd like to thank Link and Link very much for sending these for me to do a quick review of. I've been very impressed with the quality of them overall. So um, I'm going to do a, a series more videos on living with locks on and some of the other technologies that we've got in the automated home here now that we're living in a more complete home um, than some of you may have seen on some of my older videos. Um, it's been fantastic to get the feedback from so many of you in the past and had interactions with people that are um, looking to use things like the, the Somfy blinds that I have, the locks on system that we've installed. Um, I've got something close to 1,500 subscribers now, so thank you very, very much for that. So if you haven't, please like this video. It helps me a great deal. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you very, very, very much for your time. I really appreciate um, uh, the feedback that I've had from all of you in the past.